In this video, we're going to look at arc lengths and the areas of sectors. Let's start off with some basics. If I take a circle, we can go ahead and label up some circle parts. So we know that we have the center, the center will be just here. I'm going to draw on a radius. A radius goes from the center to the circumference. The circumference is simply the distance around the outside. So if I drew another radius up, we'd have now from the center to the circumference. I could put on here a diameter. A diameter will go from the circumference to the circumference and pass through the center of the circle. So let's go ahead and label these up. So here's my center. This is a diameter. So let's write on here diameter. So that's the diameter. And then we have the radius. So I've got one radius just here and the other radius just here. So that's a radius. And I'm going to label this up point A. So point A is just here. And I'm going to have point B just here. The area trapped between this radius and this one is called a sector. So all we've got here is a sector. If I split this up, and I'm just going to take away the diameter for a second. Let's just move this down here. We'll put this here. I can see, in fact, we'll have to just rub that out. Let's rub that out instead. Let's rub diameter out. We can see that we've got two different sectors. I've got what we call the minor sector, which is the smaller one, and the major sector. So let's go ahead and label these up. So this one is going to be a minor sector. It's simply now the area trapped between this radius and this radius. So writing this on, we have now minor sector. This one, which is the larger of the two, is going to be the major sector. So that gives us an area. So when we're talking about sectors, we're talking about areas. We know that the distance around the outside is the circumference. What we're now going to do is look at an arc. An arc is simply part of the circumference. So I can say now that this is going to be the arc AB. This is a minor arc, as it's the smaller part. So if we look at the other one, again, we could say that this was BA. We could say that this was the major arc. So if I travel from B round to A, this now is called a major arc. It's simply now part of the circumference of a circle. So major arc. In the video, we're going to look at finding an arc length and also the area of a sector. Before we go for that, we need to know how to find out the area of a circle and the circumference of a circle. So the area of a circle is given as pi, which is just a number, multiplied by r squared, where r is the radius. The circumference is given as 2 pi r. So all this is telling me is, if I want the distance around the outside, I multiply 2 by pi by the radius. If I wanted another way to write this, I could write that the circumference was pi multiplied by the diameter. We can see now if this radius was 5 centimetres, then the diameter would be double that. And that's what we have. So these are the two formulae we need to know. The area is pi r squared. So we take pi, which is just 3.142, and that's on the calculator just here. So pi, 3.14159 and so on but we can use 3.142. That's that number, and we multiply it by the radius squared. There's a full tutorial on this, so if you do need to check that out, check it out. As a brief bit of revision, let's go ahead and find now the area and circumference of a circle. So I'm going to say now that the radius of this circle is going to be, let's just say it's going to be five. So if I wanted to find the area, which is the space trapped inside, the area, and we'll make this centimeters, we're going to have pi multiplied by 5 squared. That's going to give me 25 times by pi, which is 25 pi, and we can find that on a calculator. It's going to be around 78. Let's put this in. So 25, we hit shift and pi. You can, of course, put multiply in there. So that gives me 25 pi, which is 78.5. So 78.5. That will be centimetres squared, and that's correct to one decimal place. So that is the space trapped inside. If we now look at the circumference, 
this is going to be either pi times the diameter. So if that was the case, I'd have now 10 as my diameter, or I can say that it's 2 times by pi times by the radius. So in this case, 2 times by pi times by the 5, that's going to give us 10 pi, and that's going to give us now 31.4, and that's correct to one decimal place. That will be given in centimetres. Remember, the circumference is the length. So 1 dp. If you want to just check that on here, 10, and you can use multiply by pi. Remember, pi is 3.142, etc., etc., and that's what we end up with. Okay, so that's the area and circumference of a circle. When we're talking about arcs, we're talking about a portion of the circumference. So it's just part of the circumference. When we're talking about sectors, we're talking about part of the area. So all we're going to use is these formulae. So if we want an arc length, this is going to give us now where we need to start. So this is an arc length. And then this is going to be a sector. So that's the arc length, and this is going to be the area of the sector. So let's see these in action and work with some basic examples before moving on to some more challenging ones. So let's start off. What we've got here now are three different diagrams. We can see now that we've got sectors. We can also see that we've got an arc length. I've left the circle in to make this fairly clear. So what I'm going to do is find the area of this sector, so the bolded sector. Now you're probably thinking, well, if I find the area of a circle and divide my answer by 4, I'm going to get the correct answer because this is a right angle. And you're absolutely right. And this is going to be the basis of what we do. So what we're going to do is find the area of a sector. So pi r squared is the area of a circle. So we would say now that this is 11 squared, which is 121, times by pi. But I've only got one quarter of it. So I would just simply divide my answer by 4. So this is going to be 121 pi divided by 4. And of course you could work this out first. Now what if our angle wasn't as nice? Well all we're going to simply do is write how many degrees of the circle we've got. So if you wanted to work this out, the area of this circle, let's just do this, 121 times by pi. That's going to give me now... 380.1327 and so on and so forth. I would divide that answer by 4 as I've only got a quarter and that would give me 95.033. Okay, again, so let's just write this in. So 95. So 95.0 and that would be meters squared. So that would give me the area because I've just divided my answer by 4. If I looked at the circumference of a circle, it would be 2 pi r. And I'd have now 2 times by 11 times by pi. So that would be 22 pi. That would give me the entire circle. I need to divide my answer by 4. So just writing this in. So it'd be 22 pi divided by 4. And we can go ahead and find that. So in here, so if we take 22 and then we have pi and we divide it by 4 that would give us our answer. So if we look at that, that's going to give us 17.3. So 17.3 metres, and that is correct to one decimal place. And that's quite straightforward. With this one, if we look at this one, we have 60 degrees. 60 of 360 is 1.6. This one, we have 120. So we would simply multiply our answer by a third or divide by three we would divide our answer by 6. But in general, what we do is put the angle, and I'm going to call the angle theta. Theta is just an angle. We divide it by 360, and we multiply it by pi r squared for the area of a sector. This is going to give us the area of a sector. So just writing this down. And if we do exactly the same, for angle theta, or x if you like, over 360 multiplied by the circumference, which is 2 pi r, will give us now the arc length. So just writing this in, arc length. So what is this saying? Well, it's saying we've got a portion or a fraction of a circle. And if you think about this one, I could have applied it here. I have 90 
over 360 and that's going to break down as an equivalent fraction to one quarter. So we can see now why I divided my answer by four. If we look at this one, we have 60 of the 360 and that would break down to one over six. So I would just divide my answer by six. If you think what's going on here, we've simply got now another one of these, which is gonna be 60. We're going to have another one, which is going to be 60. We're going to have another one, which is going to be 60. And we're gonna have another one, which is gonna be 60. And we would simply divide the circumference by six or the area. So let's go ahead and do a couple of these. So this one, what we're going to do, if we weren't sure about this one, and we wanted to find the area of this major sector, we would do 210 of the 360 degrees, and we would multiply that by pi r squared. So it'd be 13 squared, so we would say now, multiply by 13 squared, and that would give us the area of this sector right here. So in your calculator, let's go ahead and do that. So we've got now 210 of the 360. Again, you could cancel that fraction if you wanted. Multiplied by pi r squared. So multiplying it now by pi, or if you like 3.142, multiplying it now by 13 squared, and that is going to give us now on here 309.7, and that is to one decimal place. So 309.7, and that would be square feet. And that is the area of the, ma uh, the major sector, which is just in here. So let's just go ahead. So I've just found the area of that, because I have 210 degrees. Just be careful. Um, sometimes you're given the other side. So for example, we might be given this angle, and we might have to find the other one. So for example, now, if I was not given that 45 degrees, and I was told that this was going to be 315 degrees, and I could then go ahead and work that one out. So if we wanted the arc length, and I'll say that this is going to be the arc AB, we would simply use the formula again. We have 210 of the 360, so 210 of 360. This is just saying I've got this amount of the total multiplied by 2 pi r, so 2 times by pi, times by 13, and we can give our arc length as the answer. So let's write this in, that's going to be the arc length. So that is, if you like now, A, B. So if we had to find A, B, let's go and do that. So we're going to have now 210, or if you just want to write 21 over 36 as an equivalent fraction, multiplied by two, multiplied by pi, multiplied now by 13 and that's going to give us 91 over 6 pi and that's 47.6 so 47.6 feet and that is gain 2 so let's write this in arc length here and that is given to one decimal place okay let's say we were asked to find the perimeter of this major sector all we would do here is simply take now the arc length and add it to this radius and then this radius. So the perimeter is the distance around the outside and I can say now that this is going to be 13, so this is 13, and then we've just found the arc length to be 47.6, so let's write that in. So 47.6, it's not a fantastic sketch, um, but that just gives us what we want. So checking this in the calculator, we can see now two times pi times by 13, our arc length is going to be 46 and we would add the two. So if I add to this now 26, the perimeter of the shape is 73.64. So on this one, 225 over 360, on this one, 45. Okay, let's have a look at some more. So we're asked to find the area and perimeter of each shape. So this time we don't have the circles and we need to find the area and perimeter. Let's start here. Well, the area is going to be 45 of the 360 and we're going to multiply this by pi 
times by the radius squared. This, remember, is a circle, and this is the portion of it we've got. If you wanted, you could break this fraction down and just say that this is one eighth. Remember, if we had, and if I just quickly put this on, if we had now the next part and we had 90 degrees, we know that that would be one quarter. So this is just half of that, and that's one eighth. So straight for a calculator with this, let's find out what that is. So we could say now either one over eight, or if you're unsure, 45 of the 360, and we're going to multiply this by pi, and then we're going to multiply this by the radius squared. And that's going to give us now 121 over 8 pi, 47.5, and that is feet squared, or square feet, correct to one decimal place. So 47.5. So let's put this in, 47.5, and that's going to be square feet, and that's to 1 dp. Okay, let's go ahead and find the perimeter. If we want the perimeter, we need the radius, just here, we need the radius the other side, and we need the arc length. So all I'm going to do is add those. So the arc length, if we take our arc length and just write it here, the arc, so the arc is going to be 45 of the 360 multiplied by 2 pi r. So all I'm doing is putting this in the calculator, and then we're going to add it to the two 11s. So we've got now... 45 of the 360, or if you like, just 1 eighth, entirely up to you, multiplied by 2, multiplied now by pi, and let's just put that in pi, and then we're going to multiply that by 11. So that gives me the arc length, which is 8.6, so just writing this on, let's go ahead and write this, so we've got now 8.639, 8.639, dot, 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 and then what we're going to do is add to it now our two 11s. So the perimeter is going to be equal to 11 plus 11 plus the 8.639 dot 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 dot. So all we need to do is add to it the two 11s and that will give us our answer. 30.6, so we've got 30.6 feet and that is correct to 1 dp. So we're going now from here simply walking the way around. This one, 240 of the 360 multiplied by pi r squared and 240 of the 360 multiplied by 2 pi r for the arc length. Right, let's have a look at these ones. This time we've got something slightly different. We're asked in the first one to find theta, which is this angle right here. So we're stepping things up a little. We're given the arc length, we're given the radius, and we need to find the angle. What we can say here is that theta divided by 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of 11 is going to give us now this value right here, which is 11. Remember, that is the arc length. The arc length is just the portion we have multiplied by 2 pi r. So depending on how you feel about this, what I'm going to do here is write this, and I'm going to divide both sides by 11. So I've got 2 pi multiplied by theta divided by 360 is going to be equal to 1. So all I've done is just simply rewritten this. We're trying to solve for theta. Depending on, on when you're, where your algebra skills are will determine how you deal with this. I'm going to do it very, very step by step, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 360. So we're going to have 2 pi multiplied by theta is equal to 360. I want theta, which is the angle. I'm just simply going to multiply 360 by 2 pi. We can find that value in the calculator, so we're going to have now 360 divided by 2, and then we'll have pi. That's going to give me the value of 57.29, and we can say that this is going to be 57.3, and that's degrees, and that's to one decimal place. If you ever move on to radian measures, this is quite a nice result. 
This is what we call one radian. But for now, we will leave it like so. Remember, this is the arc length. This is the portion of the circle. We're going to multiply that now by 2 pi r, and this gives us the arc length. So this is the circumference. This is now the portion of the circle, and this is the arc length. So we can simply work this backwards, and that's one way that you could do it. OK, let's look at the next one. On this one, we need to find the length of the radius. So we have 60 of the 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius, and that gives us 15. So we can now simply, if you want, divide 15 by all of this. It's entirely up to you on how you want to see this. I'm going to just tidy this up. This is 1, 6. So if I've got 1, 6 multiplied by 2 pi, that's going to give me 2 pi over 6 multiplied by the radius, and that is going to give me 15. You can, of course, simplify this further, and you can do pi multiplied by the radius divided by 3, and that would be 15. So multiplying both sides by 3 and dividing by pi is going to give us now 45 over pi. So 45 over pi will be the length of the radius. As stated, if your algebra skills are pretty good, you would have done that potentially a lot quicker. I've done it step by step here, and we can find the radius. So it's going to be 45 divided by pi. There is a quicker way of doing it, but again, if we follow it step by step, it should be make sense. So 14.3 and that will be now centimetres and that is to 1 dp. So that's 1 dp. So there we go, that's a nice little problem. There are alternative approaches as stated, that is just one way to split it up. This is the portion of the circle, this is the circumference of a circle and this is the arc length. So arc length. So we just work these two backwards. So, slightly more challenging questions, and they're just one way of doing them very step by step. Okay, let's move on to an A, A star question to finish off. It says this diagram shows a triangle ABC with AB equal to 8 centimetres, so that one's fair, AC equal to 11 centimetres, and the angle BAC equal to 30 degrees. The arc uh, BD, uh, so this is the arc BD, where D lies on AC is the arc of a circle with center A and radius 8 centimeters. The region R, shown shaded in the diagram, is bounded by the straight lines BC and CD and the arc BD. We are asked to find A, the length of the arc BD, which is this part, B, the perimeter of R, which is going to be that part, and uh, that needs to be to three significant figures, and then C, the area of R, given our answer to three significant figures. So this is going to be a very tough question, and we need to go ahead and work out these values. Let's start now with the length of the arc BD. If we get rid of R, this is just part of a circle. So if I want BD, I have now, and I'm going to write this here, so this is BD. BD is going to be 30 of the 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of 8. If I just tidy this up, as it's an A star question, I'm kind of uh, thinking on here, hopefully you should be fairly cool with this. 30 of 360 is 112. We're going to multiply that by 16 pi. So we could write this now simplifying the fraction, 16 over 12 is 4 thirds pi. This is what we call an exact answer, and that's in centimetres. If I wanted to leave that as an exact answer, I would do. What I'm going to do now is just give a decimal answer. So this is going to be now 4, and then we're going to have pi. We're going to divide by 3, and that is going to give me 4.19 correct to 3 significant figures. So 4.19 that's centimetres, and that now is to three significant figures. 
So if I want now on the next bit, the perimeter of R, I can use that. So what we've got then is the following. Let's just put this on and I'm going to leave this in exact form. Every time I work in exact form, I'm making sure that my answer will stay as accurate as possible. So that is the arc length BD. If this is 11 centimetres and this is 8 centimetres, then this is going to be 3 centimetres. And that's DC. What we need now is the length of BC. Now, with the length of BC, what we can do is use the cosine rule. So if I look now, I'm going to label this angle A and just label this up. I'm just going to say that this is angle A, this is A, this one is B, and this one is going to be C. So what I'm looking to do is find this length, BC, which I've called A. If we use the cosine rule, we've got A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. Then we're going to have minus 2BC cos A. So that is the cosine rule. So just writing this out, I'm going to find the length A. So A is going to be equal to the square root. So we're going to have now the square root of B squared, which is going to be 8 squared plus c squared, which is 11 squared, minus two lots of b, which is eight, multiplied by c, which is 11, multiplied by cos of 30 degrees. That will give me the length just here. Then all I need to do is add it to my values. If we look at this number right here, we can store this in the calculator if you want. Shift, store, a. You certainly don't need to, as we can type that in, but it's an option for you. So let's go ahead now and find this length A. So it's 8 squared plus 11 squared minus now 2 times by 8. Then we're going to times this now 2 times by 8 times by 11. And then we're going to multiply this by the cosine of 30 degrees. Check your calculator has a little D there. If not, just hit shift mode 3. That's going to give me 5.7. So let's write this in. A is going to be equal to 5.7 dot 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 and so on and so forth. So if we just put this up, so this is going to be A, we're going to have this is equal to 5.7 dot 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 and then we can just add these up. I like to store these in the calculator, shift store B. So what I now have is the following. I have 3 plus recall A plus recall B, adding all of those up we're going to end up now with 12.89. So I need to give this to three significant figures. So it's going to be 12.9, and that is going to be centimetres, correct, to three significant figures. So I would show in my workings exactly what I was doing. So nice and logical, we find this one, we find this one, and we find this one. Add them all up, show clearly that you're adding those, and then round your answer accordingly. In the third part, part C, we need to find the area of R, giving our answer to three significant figures. What I'm going to do here is find, and I'll take these values off, let's just go ahead and take these values off. I'm going to find now the area of this sector and subtract it away from the area of this big triangle. So let's just remind ourselves now that the area of a triangle is given to be now, one half A, B, sine C. So if I wanted the area of a whole triangle, the area is going to be one half. We're going to have A, which I'll call 8. So one half times by 8, times by B, which is 11, times by the sine of 30 degrees. That is going to give me the whole area. So that's going to give me the triangle A, B, C. Sine of 30 degrees, as you'll come to see, is one half. So what I'm going to have here is one quarter times, that's uh, like one half times by one half, which is a quarter. A quarter of eight is two. Two times by 11 is going to give me 22. And that will be centimeters squared. If you're unsure, simply type it into the calculator. I'm not expecting at this level that you would know uh, the sine of 30 degrees. So we've got times by 8 times by 11 times now by the sine of 30 degrees. 
and that will give us now the 22. So that is the total area and that I'm just going to show here is the triangle and that is triangle ABC. So triangle ABC has an area of 22. Let's now find this sector. So let's do the sector and we're going to have now 30 of the 360 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius squared. Now if we look at this, that's going to give us now this our, uh, this sector here so times by 8 squared so if I wanted I could write this as 1 12 multiplied by pi multiplied by 64 and again you could cancel that if you wanted I'm just going to write this in the calculator so we're going to have now 64 pi so this is 64 pi divided by 12 and that's going to give me now 13, uh, sorry, 16 over 3 pi, which is about 16.75 and so on and so forth. So this now is going to be the area just here. So this is 16 thirds pi. And I know that the whole thing is 22. So R is going to be equal to 22 minus 16 thirds of pi. And we can go ahead and do that. So let's do that. Then we'll do... And again, if you want to store this in your calculator, just in case you lose it, 22 minus now, and just pressing recall A, that's going to give us 5.24. So R is going to be equal to, and let's write it here, 5.24. So R is equal to 5.24, and that is centimetres squared. So a really, really challenging question using the cosine rule and the area of a non-right angle triangle. It's m m highly unlikely that you would get that as one complete question in an exam, but hopefully that has given a good explanation of how you would deal with it. And I've used some, for this level, some quite advanced uh, fraction work and using exact values, but hopefully you followed and that gives us what we need. So let's just recap. The cutoff point was about here. So if you're up to here and you think that's perfectly fine, we're simply now looking at a portion of the circle. We know that the area of the circle is given as pi r squared. We know the circumference is 2 pi r or pi d. All we do is take how many degrees we have over 360 and multiply it by pi r squared for the area of the sector. We take theta, which is the angle, or x, over 360, multiply it by 2 pi r for the arc length. 